with conversion to Catholicism and a pledge to join the militia, slaves could inherit their freedom. Hi, I'm Allison Godlove, your history travel guide for this episode of Florida Road Trip. I'm here in the plaza in downtown St. Augustine. The Spanish landed here 55 years before the pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock, thereby cementing this city's place in history for more than four centuries. There are very few places anywhere in the United States where it's more exciting and relevant to teach American history than in the nation's most continuously inhabited city within the continental United States. Ponce de Leon discovered Florida in 1513, naming it La Florida and claiming the land for Spain. For the next 50 years, the Spanish tried multiple times to settle in Florida and failed. When the French were able to establish a fort near Jacksonville, the Spanish king sent a fleet led by Pedro Menendez to remove them. On September 8, 1565, Pedro Menendez and his fleet landed in the area we now call St. Augustine. It was absolutely unacceptable for the Spanish king to allow the French to get a foothold in this area that Spain had claimed begins a military campaign to eliminate the French presence uh, up north, which he does, and then comes back and gradually the settlement begins to develop. St. Augustine became a military outpost for the Spanish and a mission ground to convert people to Catholicism. As the military attacks increased on the city, the Spanish began building the Castillo de San Marcos in 1672. It's one of two forts built of coquina, a mixture of limestone and broken shells. While the fort changed ownership over the years, it's important to note it was never taken by force. The Spanish background of St. Augustine is what makes it so incredibly relevant when we compare it to American history in the British colonies. To understand things like the Stono Slave Rebellion that occurred in South Carolina, it only makes sense to understand that slaves were trying to get to Spanish Florida because with conversion to Catholicism and a pledge to join the militia, slaves could inherit their freedom. That was unlike any other territory, any other region in the United States at that time. The city remained under Spanish rule until 1763. That's when the French and Indian War ended and the Treaty of Paris was signed, giving Florida to the British. A second treaty was signed in 1784, returning Florida to Spain as a thank you for helping the Americans in the war against the British during the American Revolution. Not long after, Spain's interest in the Western colonies dwindled, and through negotiations with the U.S., Florida became a U.S. territory in 1821.